opportunity to speak, that is uh, the person that you always are. I will be very uh, quick to make comments because most questions have been asked. But Honorable, Honorable Speaker, allow me to be the devil's advocate here. I want to speak from the point of information. I was at the University of Nairobi yesterday, uh, School of Law, at uh, one of the lecture theaters where they were admitting law students. And Honorable Speaker, I am here to confirm and congratulate University of Nairobi because that's the only place where I went to verify the workability of this system at the ground level. And we had many students who had challenges with fees, application, and they were all gathered in one of the halls. I can report as a member of parliament for Rangwe Constituency, Honorable Speaker, nobody was turned away because of school fees, as a matter of fact. So I saw that, and I want to thank the system, I want to thank the ministry, but you need to do better. Nobody was turned. I don't know what happened in other, uh, other universities. I don't know what is going to happen in uh, uh, the ones who are going to be admitted later, but yesterday no student was turned away because of his. Uh, Madam Pierce, what informs a, a basic uh, uh, earning of 5,000 and not 2,000 and not 3,000? Where did you get that information from? Number two, why not build hostels for our students, even from the affordable housing scheme? Why not build hostels instead of burdening our students with loan? And this is what depresses young people to the point of committing suicide. Number three, Honorable Speaker. Three and last. I am very fast and I've waited, Honorable Speaker, and I'm your friend. Everybody else has. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mwishimua. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, uh, another matter that is of concern to me, I am really, really worried. If a 1975 model of MTI can be used to get interactions of variables and make decisions, when we have better models, newer models like principal component analysis, that can give you interactions of the various... Why did you go for 1975 model? Finally, Honorable Speaker, I want to say this. We do not need as a country the respect that Kenya gets outside here is more than what... Uh, is more than its measure. We do not need to move from one mathematical model to another one, exchanging models after models after models and depressing parents. What we need to fix education of this country is free education. That is all we require. We do not want to know how you have gone to school and you come up with this model. We are not, mathematics is not for fixing poverty. We want actualization of issues, qua ground. That is all we want. We do not want, Honorable Speaker, Nikamia Lisa Kabisa will not uh, talk again. We do not want to depress young people with burden of loans when they start working. Let them go, look for jobs that we should also provide as a country so that we make Kenya a better place to live in. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Mayaka, one minute. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Don't Finally. emulate your neighbor. Take one minute. <laughs> uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I'll be very brief. Honorable Speaker, I was just looking at the task force report uh, that was shared together with this document. And one of the things that is very apparent is that, number one, there was no pilot done for this system for you to be able to determine the criteria that you're using. Because you cannot use a social criteria methodology on informal uh, income earning Kenyans and people in the agricultural sector. That doesn't make sense. Number two, Honorable Speaker, we have a report here that has recommendations and mitigations without any timelines. It just says what doesn't work, but doesn't say when it can be made to work. Number three, Honorable Speaker, when you're using a 1975 model, it's akin to using a Nokia 3310 in the current age. And the way systems and technology is so dynamic, it means that we are not helping uh, our Kenyans. And finally, Honorable Speaker, if you notice one of the uh, task force recommendations here, 
it actually says that the PWDs cannot be able to use this system. So what happens to children who are PWDs? Do they not go to university? Because there's no solution given here. Thank you. And finally, Honorable Speaker, I just want to I suggest... I thought she said they get special... This one is a suggestion, Honorable Speaker, yes. that will be very helpful to all members. Is that the Q&As that we've asked and the responses that we've gotten... Yes, if you can get that uh, together. And also just do ex brief, brief uh, videos on X and TikTok for the young people who are the consumers of Thank this. You, so that Irene, they can be able to know. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Jen Kehara. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this chance. Uh, we are lucky you called this Kamukunji, which has addressed most of the things. But I can say that actually this information was not for us because they are not addressing the clients. I know the PS had a, a meeting with the student leaders, which did not end very well. I hope by now, from what has come out of this Kamukunji, most of the answers will have been asked. I'll only be able to answer the clients who come to me, like this one here, who sent me a message, and I beg the PS, Madam PS, to answer for me. Uh, dear AYMP, I'm a resident of Kayore Naivasha, next to Chief's office, where I live with my three sons in a two-roomed house where we all share one room as a bedroom. I'm seeking your help since my firstborn son was schooling at Kagumo High and, and attained grade A, where he left huge balance, but the principal was merciful enough to clear for me. My problem is that he is to pursue a degree in dental surgery in Nairobi University. But unfortunately, the government placed him in band five, where I'm supposed to pay 245 in a year, not forgetting that I'm jobless. I have another kid in Form 3 where I also have a balance of fees. I'm writing this to you. It's because you will find it in your favor, in your heart to assist me. God bless you. I'm pleading to be placed, even if it is band 2, where I can, get, I can even get help from friends in case I'm, I got stuck. But band 5, there is even no need starting this. So the recipient of this message is not us. I'll, I'll be able to get an answer now here. But the actual, actually, this information should go to the Jen, parents. we already have the answer. She, that's what I'm saying. It should go to the parents, the, the, the clients, and, now, and the students. Now tell that parent yeah. <laughs> that you are told in this house, in this meeting, that when the student reports to the university, he goes straight to the desk that has been set up and informs them that he has been placed in the wrong band on the basis of wrong information. Mr. Which Speaker, wrong information? Let me finish for it, you. Okay. Which wrong information was acknowledged by the peers that they have taken some students from national schools where the fees is high and they have operated on the presumption that that gives a background of what their parents earn, which is not true. So tell the parent to tell the son, the student, to go and correct That's that. That's why this Kamukoji is important, because now they will get to hear from the media and ask, but the ministry is not doing anything to communicate to the, recip the correct recipients. Exactly. Thank you, Jen. And media help the country on this. Eh? That's why we call you here to help us. Kipchumba Wakili. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for calling us for this Kamukunji so that we can discuss this very important issue. Honorable Speaker, this new funding model heralded a significant shift in policy. Honorable Speaker, going forward, before such a policy is adopted, my proposal is it would be prudent to be brought before the floor of this House to be discussed and members adopt it as a whole. Because, Honorable Speaker, members never, this report was never brought before the floor of this House so that members could discuss it at that point and understand. Number two, Honorable Speaker, Thomas Fuller said that seeing is believing, 
but failing is the truth. Madam Speaker, I have read through this report. One of the issues that has been raised is that the level of need relies heavily on the information provided by the applicant. Madam Speaker, why can't the ministry visit the household of these particular students to determine by seeing, by feeling it, so that before the, 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 the band is, uh, uh, before they are categorized in certain bands, they have visited their household to determine the level of poverty. Some of us, Honorable Speaker, from our community, we take pride in our cows. We take pride in our farms. We take pride in our livestock. Honorable Speaker, it is very hard for a Kalenjin person to tell you that I am poor. So some of these are out of uh, information that is not given correctly because we never, or that they never visited the actual students on the ground. Honorable Speaker, I propose that they form a committee. We did, we did a census in this country, Honorable Speaker, where the households were visited. Honorable Speaker, what stops the ministry from going to, uh, from household to household to determine the actual need of these students. Thank you, Parashina. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving us a, a Kajado an opportunity also. First of all, I need to appreciate your, your humility and patience. Since nine up to now, uh, no, since 10 up to now, Mr. Speaker, today I salute you. Thank you so much. May, Mr. Speaker, uh, the only issue that I really needed to, uh, to raise we should not do experimental exercise with our students. This uh, program is getting us as it is kicking on. It should have, uh, it should have uh, been able to have us the way Mr. Honorable Kipchumba have said. We could have discussed it before now being going for experiment. These are the challenges that people are facing just because of the policy that the, the, minister, the minister has introduced without first of all explaining it to the public. Number two is the issue of the, as I told you, as I said, I come from the arid areas. The issue of the bands, band one, I, we could have seen here a proposal that the, the, the band one should be pure scholarship. I might have been coming from a very poor family, and I'm talking from the people of Kajado, Kajado South, and I'm very poor, and I don't have an opportunity to get even the 5,000 or even to anything that I'm supposed to be in any country equating me to 5,000. And I'm left, I'm left, I'm, I'm left, I'm left uh, outside. So then my point is, if, at, if possible, we introduce the issue of um, full scholarship. Uh, and this full scholarship should be able to take a care of, of me, maybe if I'm, I'm born as a, uh, from the poor background, I should be given a, a same opportunity as someone who's getting the, the other opportunity, the, who can access the education. Rather than, if I'm forced to take the, 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 to take the 95% loan, that kind of program, then tomorrow the issue of repayment to me becomes also a burden to my life, and even securing an opportunity for jobs becomes become also a, a challenge. So, if possible, there should be a full scholarship for the students who are, who are categories are very poor, uh, for very, very poor and vulnerable. And even the, the issue of um, having 100% should be introduced. My last point is about repayment. When we cleared university, some of us also got the, the help loan. When we are coming to contest for these seats, we are even to be told you have to come with a clearance from help, help loan. And like, if the way they are saying that a one year repayment, that again is not, it's not in the right, in the good spirit. There should be repayment. If you are able to connect repayment and employment, it should be the better, the better thing. Many people now are suffering the penalties and everything. You get that you have took a loan of um, 200,000, now it's going to almost 500,000. So for purpose of uh, giving everyone fair, fairness, if I have an opportunity of getting an uh, employment, then my penalty will start there. Not having an, a penalty for the time I graduate from the university. Thank you. Thank you. Parashina. Mualio. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. We really thank you for calling us to come and uh, discuss about the, the model of funding the university and our colleges. I want to say that uh, everybody has said about the way the assessment of the income of every, of every parent has been done is not correct. 
And I say this because one of the Masons that who called me yesterday, he said because his employer has been transferring money through his M-Pesa to buy materials for where he is supervising the employer's um, uh, building, 200,000 has passed through his, um, his M-Pesa, and therefore the assessment has placed him his income as 230,000, which is not true, because the mass on the earns maybe 1,500 per day or 2,000, and uh, that it translates to 60,000 in a day if he works for 30 days. But now he has been, been classified in band five, whereby he cannot be able even to, to afford the, the, to take the, the